strikes over pay rise continue to halt health services. Protests over budget cuts. Ugly scenes at Winchester City spoil a five goal thrashing. These stories are coming up soon, but first, we go to the protest in Missouri, which followed the decision not to prosecute a white policeman over the shooting of a black teenager. Angry crowds have protested for a second night after Darren Wilson killed Michael Brown in August. Earlier, we spoke to our sister co college, Eastern Illinois, about the levels of violence taking place in Ferguson. Brittany Borthwick from WEIU has the latest. So, Brittany, how do you think the police could have handled the situation? I believe um, that is the, how the police handled the situation and are handling the riots in the Ferguson area are the core of, of the divide we're seeing right now. There is some community members that think the police aren't handling it correctly, and there's another com other community members that believe they're handling it right. I can tell you it's not my decision to make whether they're handling it correctly or not, but I can tell you how they are handling it. As of Monday night, uh, there was a police presence. The National Guard in St. Louis was on standby. I know they weren't called in, but there was tear gas. Um, there was businesses burnt to a crisp. Uh, I know police continue to use tear gas. Um, they increased their police presence. And also, there was police cars vandalized and burned. There was reports of gunshots, so it got pretty violent Monday night, and I know the riots are still going on today, like I said. Could this problem happen in any other American cities? Happening already in places like Chicago, New York, uh, Champaign, other places in Illinois, here in the U.S. And um, yeah, I think we're going to see more, hopefully, peaceful protests, but we're already seeing more um, more reaction to this, and I, I think we will see more across the U.S. How are the U.S. government going to respond to this amount of violence? Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be tough for the uh, police community and the residents near the Ferguson area to be on the same page. There's been a huge divide, like I said. I think it's going to take a lot of voices of officials and a lot of voices of residents to um, encourage peaceful protesting. And if people do want their voice heard and to take a stand on this matter, as everyone is, has an opinion on this, I think it should be in a, um, an equally divided way, and I believe that we should encourage um, peaceful protests so we can move forward. One last question. How do you think it's affecting those who are not writing in Ferguson? I think it is affecting everybody, um, whether you're writing or not, whether you're peacefully protesting or not, whether you're the media, whether you're a, a viewer at home. I think everyone, like I said, has an opinion on this, and I think Unfortunately, you're going to be on one side or the other, and hopefully uh, through all of the media attention and hopefully through people that will encourage peace, um, I think people on the other side that aren't rioting, um, hopefully they will have a positive impact on this, but I think it is affecting people that aren't rioting and are rioting. Thanks, Brittany. We also have footage from James Henderson, a reporter from Northwest Missouri. He gets reaction from a student about the rioting. Ferguson ain't never been like this. It's always been so calm and so peaceful, like, you really don't hear too much about anything. I feel like the police are doing, they don't, I really don't think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like, it's just, I don't think it's right. Like, this law system is just, it's like they don't care, you know? It's like they just killing black men just to be doing it. Like, I don't understand. When I looked online, I saw everything was just, everything was just destroyed. I was just, I don't know, I was just thinking to myself, like, it's just getting way out of hand. Now, back to Winchester. There were pickets outside the Royal Hampshire County Hospital once again on Monday as some NHS workers joined a national four-hour strike. The action is over the government's refusal to implement a 1% pay rise recommended by an independent panel. Isaac Edwards has the report. <laughs> It was an all too familiar sight outside Royal Hampshire County Hospital on Monday morning as disgruntled NHS workers resorted to strike action yet again. 
Their dispute is with the government, who cancelled a promised 1% pay increase for all NHS staff. Unison Regional Manager Sarah O'Donoghue talked of the impact stagnant pay is having on some NHS members. You know, we know we have members who go to food banks, who are on benefits, because the pay is just not good enough. So they're finding it hard to cope on a personal level in terms of meeting daily living costs, but also they don't feel valued by the employer. Southampton City Councillor Royston Smith defended the government's decision not to award the 1% pay rise to NHS staff. And it is tough, it's tough for everyone, but we're going to have to get on with it because otherwise we're going to be in all sorts of trouble going forward. And we cannot just keep going on paying people what they would like, and I know that people would like a lot more. We cannot do that because the country has a deficit and a huge debt. Workers themselves disagree, insisting they deserve their 1% pay increase. So that's why we're out here today. Uh, Scotland, they got their 1%. Wales, they got their 1%. In England, 0%. With NHS workers here at Hampshire County Hospital striking for the third time in a month, it seems clear that the workers won't give up their 1% pay rise without a fight. Isaac Edwards, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Winchester Prison is experiencing its highest levels of violence for several years, according to the prison's independent monitoring board. In response, the governor is recruiting more staff and introducing more security measures. Our crime correspondent Bracken Stockley has this exclusive interview with David Roy. Prisoners who carry out assaults will face harsher punishments as prisons crack down on violence. Government figures show that in England and Wales, assaults and staff have risen by 12% in the last year. Winchester Prison has been described by the Independent Monitoring Board as very much work in progress and much remains to be done. The admission of young adult offenders has led to a marked increase in violence and there is said to be an atmosphere of gang culture. But the organisation acknowledged that the prison governor has made substantial progress across many areas. I would say staff are more anxious, clearly, because the assaults against staff nationally is going up, um, probably going up at a level that I haven't seen for a very long time. Does that cause me concern? Yes, it does. We have seen a significant rise in violence against staff uh, in the last year, unfortunately, so we're doing a number of things to try and counter that. The, certainly violence and, and gang crime isn't just linked to 18 to 20 year olds, and one could argue actually gang crime in this area is linked to, to um, more, uh, certainly prisoners who are older than, than that age group, but the 18 to 20 year olds do cause um, significant harm to one another and to staff. Winchester Prison has been reclassified as a complex establishment. This means it now benefits from additional funding for prisoner care programmes. It is expected that prison officer vacancies in Winchester will be filled by the beginning of next year, meaning that there will be more frontline staff. Bracken Stockley, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Winchester was at the centre of a national campaign against badger culling this weekend. The protest was the 27th of its kind and protesters called upon their celebrity friend Chris Packham for help. As environment correspondent Meg Fisher had the details. Save our badgers! No Save our badgers! Hundreds of campaigners stormed Winchester this weekend as part of a national wildlife protest. This is the second year of badger culls in a four-year project set out by the Environment Secretary. Picket signs, badger costumes and leaflets to raise awareness against badger culling. Protesters question the need for the culls and their humaneness. So all round, the badger cull is a, is a disaster. And to cause suffering, needless suffering, is abhorrent, which is beyond the pale, isn't it? This cull's still taking place. It's equally as invalid now as it was six months, as it was a year ago. Badger Trust CEO shared his concerns about how the cull was being carried out. The shooting process that they've gone forward with is very cruel and very ineffective. So we're telling the government that there is no justification for going on with this policy. It must stop now. Protesters felt strongly about the badger calls. I think it's an absolute disgrace and atrocity. It should never have started. It should never carry on. Innocent badgers are being killed and blamed for something that they cannot prove they are responsible for, which is bovine TB. Defra told Winnell, 
England has the highest incidence of bovine TB in Europe and this is threatening the future of our beef and dairy. Doing nothing is not an option. Campaigners will continue to lobby MPs before the general election with the next march in Birmingham in 2015. Megan Fisher, Winchester News Online. Winchester News Online has won yet another award in the latest BJTC Honours. We have won Newsday of the Year for the third time in a row. The prestigious awards ceremony was hosted by Birmingham City University and our producer, Nicole Collis, picked up the fantastic award. Two men have been arrested after a tobacco factory was discovered in an industrial unit in Bishop's Waltham. Up to £300,000 worth of hand-rolling tobacco and processing machinery was recovered by customs officers. Investigations are still underway at the scene of last week's gas explosion in Shirley, Southampton. One house was completely destroyed and another severely damaged in the blast. A father and his four-year-old daughter were pulled alive from the rubble. Meanwhile, a petition asking for a fixed tunnel link between the Isle of why and the mainland has been granted by the government. The petition comes after years of controversy getting on and off the island with traffic issues, expensive ticket prices and a recent accident on the White Link Ferry in July. Josh Behrens has this report. On Friday, the Isle of Wight County Press published a poll asking islanders their opinion on a bridge or tunnel connecting them to the mainland. An idea that has been debated for generations, which for the first time saw a majority of residents favourable to the plan. In an interview with the Daily Echo, Chancellor George Osborne pledged to support a possible fixed link, but only if it is wanted by the islanders. Supporters of the project argue that there is growing public demand to cut travel times across the Solent. It's a football that's been kicked around quite a while over the island, but it's gained momentum because the ferry companies don't seem to be listening to the locals. It's the gift of time, a phrase I've heard you use. Let me give you an example. This time of year I go on the Argos website to buy things for, for Christmas, okay? And it will say, in stock at your nearest Argos, which is Gosport, across a load of water that will take me well, two ferry journeys, uh, and it will take at least an hour and a half. 4.2 miles an hour and a half is probably one of the slowest journeys in Europe. The front campaign said here the assurances from the Isle of Wight Conservative MP, Andrew Turner, that enough residents are interested in a referendum on the subject could take place. Opponents of the link, such as Councillor Henshaw, are concerned that the benefits of such a scheme are overstated for the islanders. Quite often the, uh, the benefits have been overstated just to get the thing built and then what's happened after that, the, the, the problems have surfaced. An online survey will be launched next year to confirm residents' views in anticipation of a possible future referendum. Josh Barons, Winchester News Online. Winchester's one-way driving system is now out of date according to a former highway and transport engineer. The council has accepted new plans to review the driving system after residents and local councillors identified its problems. Laura Harding has more. Unfit for the 21st century. These were the words used to describe Winchester's one-way driving system, which is set to be reviewed for improvements. The system has come under fire for contributing to air pollution and congestion within the city centre, as cars have to take longer routes around the city when they could be driving straight through it. Whenever people need to travel in an area and they feel they're travelling considerably further than they need to to get to their destination because they're going around a one-way system, then clearly there's an issue there. So I think uh, there are probably quite a few people who would rather Friarsgate and possibly North Walls went back to being two-way. Mike Slynn is a resident of 33 years who recently spoke at a town forum regarding the situation and how it could be improved. The one-way system forces people to travel longer to get to where they want to. And not only that, um, it means that the buses also have a lot of dead mileage, so they're travelling uh, over sections like North Wars where they don't really need to go, they should be going through the city centre. For now, the plans seem to have a handbrake on them. Laura Harding, Winchester News Online. With just a month to go until Christmas, the Winchester Christmas market and the ice rink is in full swing this year. Thousands of people are expected to turn up throughout the festive season. Nadija Parker has the details. After its official opening on Friday, 
Winchester Christmas Market is getting busier as more people are coming to visit. Market exhibitors are excited about this year's turnout as it means more business. We need more people. More people, more business. Now, last year it was very, very busy. Uh, and I think it will be this year as well. The market comes alive at night with lights, music, festive foods and an ice rink. It is also recognized as one of the best in Europe and is scheduled to run until the 21st of December. After a full day of Christmas shopping and taking in all the festivities that Winchester Christmas Market has to offer, it's nice to know there's some place you can go to have a rest. Nadija Parker, Winchester News On. Now over to Amy Catlin with the sport. Thanks. Basingstoke Town's proposed new stadium plans have come under fire in recent weeks, with Basingstoke Heritage Society opposing the idea of using the old common as a building plot. Elliot Buckley reports. Basingstoke Town Football Club's exciting start to the season has been met with plans to build a new stadium on the old common. But it's not going to be an easy task as they face opposition from many people from the town, including members of the Basingstoke Heritage Society. It's a place where a lot of people walk their dogs, where they come for quiet recreation. Although we've got the War Memorial Park across the way, that's a very busy park, full up with children and families. So those are really the main reasons, is to keep the open space. The area is used for big events like Bainstoke Live or the annual firework display, as well as having a historical background. Then during the First World War, it was used as encampments for all the troops moving down the A30 and out to Dover and across the Channel. So there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of troops camped up here. So it has quite an important place in the history of Basingstoke. Basingstoke Town announced the plans in September and have defended the plans, stating that The important thing we want to stress is that it's not just for the club, it's for the community at Basingstoke and the surrounding areas. It's not just for football, there will be a lot of community events going on. I can understand where they're coming from, but at the end of the day it's about the community, not one or two people. The community has had the opportunity to talk about it and vote on it, and get their views in. Board meetings are undergoing with an announcement set to be made before 2015. So it seems that Basingstoke Heritage Society are confident that they can oppose these plans to build this new stadium, but only time will tell if they are successful or not. Elliot Buckley, Winchester News Online, Basingstoke. There was a five-goal thriller at the Denplan City ground as Winchester City took on Foley AFC. Manager Paul Masters seems to have found his feet at the club as the free-scoring citizens have soared up the division table. Mark Betts has the action. Winchester pushed hard from the start and were rewarded for their early dominance when Warren Bentley bundled the ball home early on. Just seven minutes later, Bentley then doubled his tally and the home side's lead. His outstretched leg met Adam Roberts' well-timed cross to put early daylight between the two sides. Forley were able to put together a few chances, but goalkeeper Gareth Barfoot was quick to deny any opportunities. The second half became a training exercise for Winchester, and Zach Glasspool's delightful back heel sat at Michael McHenry to finish with ease. Glasspool's fine footwork would not look out of place in the Premier League. Chris Mason's left foot volley wasn't dealt with by the Forley keeper, Benjamin Bolt, who managed to get a hand to the dipping shot, but really should have done a lot better. Tempers flared between Warren Bentley and Forley's Chris Lucas, resulting in the stop of play as players tried to get involved in the clash. The referee gave no cards, but Lucas received a ripped shirt in the row. A sour end to an otherwise well-played match, as Winchester City ended up 5-0 winners with four wins in a row for Paul Masters men. Mark Betts, Winchester News Online. For more sports, make sure you tune into Sports Week. Back to the studio. Thanks, Amy. Our features team have some exciting things lined up this week. Ryan McAndrew takes a look. Our film critic Sarah talks through those traumatising children's films that bring back awful memories. This week I had the pleasure of meeting author of Watership Down, Richard Adams. 
It's no secret that what may start out as a gentle children's story soon turns into a dark traumatic tale. So I'm counting down my top five traumatic kids films. How To with Ellie continues this week with her guide to berry lips. With cold winter weather settling in, berry lips are perfect for putting a smile back on your face. But how do you pull it off without drawing the attention away from your lips? Fashion pro Becky shows us how to style a play suit from day into the night. And finally, the wine festival is in town this week. Our lifestyle writer Alice jumped to the chance to taste the latest wines. Be sure to check it out, it's a corker. For all this and more, head over to winnell.co.uk and click on W2. That's all from us for this week, but for more award-winning news, sports and features, head to winnell.co.uk. Goodbye. <laughs>